Hello everybody and welcome to another pre-modern video. I'm very excited about this one because we're gonna be playing my favorite pre-modern deck. A new take at least. I'm really interested and I've been thinking about this for quite a bit actually. So I'm really excited to finally take this list for a spin. Let's see if you dig it. We are of course talking about Aluren. This is, uh, oh man, th this is my pet deck. I've, I've been so excited about this deck for quite a bit. So what we're gonna be doing today is we're going to be revisiting an old take on the archetype which uh, was base black, blue, and green as opposed to white, blue, and green. The real upside is that we get access to some very powerful cards. Everybody thinks that the reason to be playing Bug is Cabal Therapy. Personally, I think that the reason to be playing it is Unearth. This card just works super, super well with Survival, and it allows us to have virtual extra copies of the cards that we need to assemble our combo, while synergizing super well with cards like Riven Familiar and Bone Shredder, which naturally go on the graveyard, and then we can unearth them uh, on, on the following turn in order to get that effect once again. So that little synergy is very, very strong. It's also a way to cheat on mana because we can get the card that we need, and this is something that a deck like Feb does all the time. We can actually get, for example, a Cavern Harpy and then pitch it to survival, and then on the following turn we can actually get it back thanks to the Unearth, for only a single mana instead of needing to spend two colors of mana to cast it. So that's an interesting idea, I think. If you're interested in understanding this deck in depth, I wrote a pretty extensive primer, which I'm going to link in the description of the video down below. Basically, the, the, the way the combo works is you put a learn in play, then Cavern Harpy plus Rhythm Familiar allows you to draw cards uh, as long as you have life. Then you have uh, add Spike Feeder into the mix, and then you start to gain two life uh, and alongside Mana War, you get to bounce your Spike Feeder, and the Cameron Harpy, this means infinite life. And then uh, to wrap things up, you have Wall of Roots to make infinite mana, and then turn all that infinite mana and infinite Spike Feeder counters to all of your dudes. So that's the main combo. What Black also offers is Mesmeric Fiend. In the other version, in the Vant version, I actually play the Meddling Mage instead. This card actually acts as a combo piece in preventing your opponent to... Uh, you basically take all the cards from their hand, and then you can also do that on your opponent's draw step, thanks to the Allurant, because this allows you to do all, all your creature tricks at instant speed, which is very, very nice. Bone Shredder allows you to kill all of your opponent's creatures. Octavia allows you to destroy all of their artifacts, all, all that stuff. So uh, the Black Splash offers some tools that are very, very strong at a pretty significant cost. So the number one thing that I've been most excited about the Bant version or Treva version of Valuren is specifically the mana base, and all of the work that I put into the mana kind of gets undone in this version because we don't have the possibility of having a fetch land in, added into the mix. The only fetch land that we have access to in this uh, three color combination is Polluted Delta, which is a fetch land that does not help us at all because we don't really want Basic Island nor Basic Swamp very much in the deck. So we do have a Singleton Basic Swamp, but you know, drawing it naturally is like fine. Uh, whereas if I'm playing Delta and also the Basic Swamp, then if I draw the Basic Swamp, then the Delta is going to be out of targets. It, it, it's just it's just bad, you know, like it forces us to play both of the cards. So instead of that, we have a much more painful mana base with a bunch of CDO Brasses, uh, my least favorite card in the entire deck, which is Gemstone Mine. And then, uh, of course, all of our pain lands in Land of War Wastes, Yabimaya Coast, and Underground River. We're wrapping everything up with Undiscovered Paradise, one copy of Trevas Ruins, and a couple of Reflecting Pools. This card I've, I've been actually very high on. Reflecting Pool has done a lot of work in giving me painless colored sources. But uh, yeah, this is very much an experiment because the mana base is, I don't want to say prohibitively costly, but it is very, very costly. And uh, one thing that you will notice is that I'm experimenting with playing no Wirewood Savage. That is because uh, the Savage is largely unnecessary. Once you assemble Raven Familiar plus Coven Harpy, you can usually find the missing piece of the combo. And one notable thing is that any Mana War and any Spike Feeder that you that you draw gives you four extra uh, Raven Familiar triggers and one extra Raven Familiar trigger, uh, respectively. And then you can also just, uh, you know, maybe like sack one of your things to, you know, flashback about therapy and then unearth it back so you can get some extra triggers that way as well. So that's going to be the idea. I am not super sold, but the idea is enticing enough to me, especially because of the synergy. Like the unearth synergy is just very tempting to not give a shot to. So we're going to see how this deck actually works in this league. 
Uh, in the sideboard, we have Oromancer, Monk Realist, Gilded Drake, like all the, the usual suspects. Uh, what I really like about this sideboard is that we actually have a pretty healthy amount of extra creatures, which is, is very, very nice when we are trying to keep our creature count high post uh, sideboard because of survival. One thing that you will notice is that I'm not playing what used to be a staple in this sideboard, basically an enemy black deck sideboard, which is Engineered Plague. And the reason for not doing so is that in every matchup where I would want Engineer to play, I think that they have a really tough time interacting with my combo. So with that in mind, I'd rather just try to assemble my combo quicker than uh, trying to like slow my opponent down. So uh, with that in mind, I added the third copy of Man of War and third copy of Spike Feeder to allow me to buy more time while having redundant copies of my combo pieces in the deck. And th this should allow me to just to combo a little bit more reliably. The other cards are fairly self-explanatory against counter magic, against graveyard strategies, against combo, therapy, and extra copies of the rest, and naturalize against artifacts, enchantments, and Sabo's web against, uh, you know, your oath and your uh, Rashad and Port uh, style creature land uh, decks in the format. Very excited to give this deck a shot. We'll see how it uh, fares in this MTGO league. If you would like to support my content, it will always be free, but if you want to throw some bucks in my way because you really enjoy it, you can go on my Patreon, which you can find on the description of the video down below or in the link that's going to show up right up there. And I'll see you for round number one. Here we go with round number one. This hand looks decent. Uh, this is one of the punishing Undiscovered Paradise hands, but I think it's okay. I still think that I risk it and I play the bird. Obviously, if my opponent kills this bird, it's kind of a disaster, but if they don't, then I get to probably play a survival on two, and they go from there. Opponent with the turn one portent. I assume this means some form of Dreadnought. My best draw is probably any land. Literally any land will do. I guess Trevas Ruins is the only one that wouldn't work. That is fine. I think I play survival. It's the most threatening thing, and I kind of want my opponent to daze this. They don't. Opponent doesn't do anything. Interesting. So I guess I'll just play Undiscovered Paradise, and I'll just play another bird. Just developing my mana here. I have a survival activation, but I'm also just using my mana. I, I'm going to try to not use this Undiscovered Paradise. So if my opponent goes for Dreadnought, then I can just use something else instead. I can just go for... Uh, or Octavia Rangutan through these. But yeah, this was like a pretty punishing Undiscovered Paradise hand. A darker waste. It's a little bit scary. That is a fantastic draw. So let's just play a Wall of Roots. That resolved. Interesting. So here's a Wall of Blossoms. I'm just putting a bunch of things on the board. It don't really do much, but if my opponent is actually playing a control deck with Wrath of God, it's problematic. I really doubt that they are because they showed me Portent. So I suspect that my opponent's playing some form of Dreadnought. Could be something like Stasis. Interesting. Okay, so I guess I'm going to activate Survival, Pitching Cavern Harpy, get Squee. Uh, we're going to start to do Survival things here. Can go get Mesmeric Fiend, which I think I'm interested in doing, but I don't think I'm interested in doing that this turn. I want to make it on a turn where it's more uncomfortable for my opponent. Raven Familiar. Oh, that's hilarious. I'm going to go for some Raven Familiar stuff here, and I'm paying like this because I may want to keep a, a, a land off of this Raven Familiar. There you go. Rewarded. So I'm going to take the basic forest. This allows me to further develop my mana. But I still don't really need to do anything. So I'm just going to activate survival and get another bird. I have so much time here. And now I'm, I'm just never allowing my opponent to use their mana profitably. Opponent keeps on cantripping, but they're not really able to pull forward while I am. We're going to see a gush here. Yep, that is fine. So now if my opponent has a dreadnought, I have some interesting decisions. There we go. So I'm definitely not going to pay for this Raven Familiar. But what I can do... I can double Mesmeric Fiend, which is an interesting thought. So I can pitch this Spike Feeder to get Mesmeric Fiend number two. Then next turn I go Mesmeric Fiend, get it countered, then second Mesmeric Fiend, clear the way, and then Octavi the Dreadnought. Yeah, that makes sense. So I'm going to pitch the Spike Feeder here. Get Mesmeric Fiend, have opponent go to this card there, discard a Meddling Mage. Not going to pay for Echo. My best draw would be Cabal Therapy. 
Huh, that's an interesting one. So play out on Discover Paradise. Let's play Mesmeric Fiend. Most likely gonna get countered. There it is. Now, second Mesmeric Fiend. Let's see what you're cooking with over there, opponent. My opponent can notably stifle this trigger. Foil. Interesting. So I have to think now, because I can go for Octavi, which gets dazed, which would be rather problematic. But if I allow my opponent to untap, then Counterspell is enabled, and my opponent can save this Dreadnought with Vision Charm and other stuff. So I have to actually count my mana, because if I use this Octavi, that means that my wall is gone, and then my Undiscovered Prize are actually going to go back to hand. So I have to think this through. So one, two, three, four, five, six mana for next turn. Yeah, I guess I YOLO here. Yep, there's the days. Can't pay. So we're gonna send the turn back. Still, my best draw is Cobalt Therapy. We're going to take 12. Could have blocked with the wall, but I'd rather have it so that if I... Exactly. If I do draw Cobalt Therapy, now I can flash it back. So Cobalt Therapy, you. No name Counterspell. Ha! Huh. Interesting. The Vision Charm and Response. I'm still naming Counterspell here. Because it's the only card that, it, that beats me. That's a pretty good play by my opponent, by the way. So by doing that, they are protecting their Dreadnought from Mana War. But now we get to resolve Alluren. We did hit a Counterspell, by the way, which was pretty sexy. And now we get to go get Raven Familiar. Cast it. Get a Wall of Roots. And then Cavern Harpy. Bounce Raven. Cast Raven. So now any one creature will do. That's a Verse of Paradise. That counts. Pay a life. Cast Harpy. Yeah, now we, we combo from here. And we can't whiff because um, we Wall of Roots to get the Spike Feeder. And then we have three Mana Wars to go towards. That was very nice. Obviously, my opponent gave me infinite time. <laughs> so we, we definitely won because of that. But it was also very, very nice the way that that worked out. Uh, Mana War, I love. Gilded Drake, I love. And now Cyberling becomes very interesting um, because Bone Shredder, my opponent showed me Meddling Mage, right? So Bone Shredder is actually very interesting because it cannot kill Dreadnought, but it's kind of interesting against Meddling Mage. Um, this is the kind of matchup where I want to play like a slower, more controlling game. So I want to uh, cut some number of Allurance and not rely so much on that. Uh, Nerf is interesting, not super stoked. But yeah, so here the, the plan is going to be to basically never cast an Aluren until like we know that it's good just like it happened that game so we're gonna have a bunch of mana wars which are pretty good against dreadnoughts and and stuff uh, also decent against a medley mage i'm going to kill keep the bone shredder out of respect for my opponent just naming mana war with medley mage uh, we do have gilded drake though which is very nice uh, Santid swarm amazing i think i'm gonna cut the wall of blossoms do like therapy and duress yeah I th i'm just gonna cut the unearth i think because otherwise I just end up with way too many just non-creatures that don't actually end the game. Naturalize is also really interesting. I think I'd rather have the discard over Naturalize. Maybe on the draw I don't. Because I have to respect my opponent being able to just cast a, a quick Dreadnought on turn 2. Yeah, actually let's let's plan for that a little bit. Let's bring in some Naturalizes to plan against a quick Dreadnought. Second Mesmeric Fiend was pretty key in that game. And a couple, couple of birds. Just go with that. Ha! Huh. So this is a hand. One lander, but I think it's uh, like my my two one drops are so strong that I think I want to keep them. Turn one of the darker ways. Okay, definitely dressing on one. And this hand is very strong. Wow, interesting keep. So I think I'm going to take this source to plowshares here because we cannot actually stop my opponent from comboing, which is really awkward. Like if they pl if they top the get dreadnought, we're gonna be in really bad shape. Nothing I can do about it. So. Never mind. There definitely is something I can do about that. That was a strong top deck. So now we're going to take the Vision Charms. That was incredible. <laughs> so now that we're taking care of the Vision Charms, we can we can um, potentially Yuktabi a Dreadnought. Impulse is a good draw for them. Now we get to Sanded Swarm, and we're hoping to find a land off the top. Any land will do. Uh, but my opponent should probably Impulse here digging for a daze or an answer to this Sanded Swarm because like this Sanded Swarm is going to blank half of my opponent's deck so they need to do anything about it. They need to do something about it. Portent. If I were my opponent and I did find a Dreadnought then I would definitely attempt to cast it then. Opponent chose to not shuffle there. And their hand is Stifle and it's going to be two unknowns. Oh, they top deck the swords. Okay. Opponent did choose not to shuffle there though. So let's spend this turn to resolve the survival. And if we miss a land drop next turn, we can turn this Raven Familiar into a Burst of Paradise. Okay, opponent goes for it. So if we find a land, we're 
we're just gonna win here. Any land wins the game. Okay, so pitch, raven, go get a bird, cast bird. We're going to take 12, and then next turn we're going to cast our little guy and hope that it works out. I can't really, if I find any land, I can uh, use the rest to clear the way, but otherwise, interesting. Yeah, okay, I'm going to attempt to clear the way. Okay, so they just cast a ace, meaning I just get to naturalize the dreadnought and we move on. Okay, so now I'm I need to start to get my mana working, but my opponent has no clock, but uh, funnily enough, a medley mage would kill me. <laughs> okay, that's a good draw. So now, what do I want to pitch? I want to pitch Raven Familiar. Let's actually pitch the Harpy, and we're gonna get the wall, and then cast Wall of Roots. This means we now get to activate Survival, pitching the Familiar to get Squee, and now we get to pass the turn. And then we get to activate survival on my opponents and step again. Made exactly one life. And I guess I'm gonna get another bird here. I could get wall of roots. Let's just get another wall. I'm trying to unlock my mana here. That's the main priority. So let's get another wall of roots. And let's get another bird into play as well. And then send the turn back. It's pretty nice that we get to change gears and now we slowly start to play a huh, nice draw and uh, now we get to start to play a very um grindy game so now activate survival get squee i think i want to get spike feeder i could get mana war to reset my wall yeah, i kind of like that play mana war reset wall cast the wall and then cast sanded swarm pass the turn and now we actually have a clock going opponent has a bunch of cards in hand but not many of them do much like really the only thing that does something here is just comboing me again exactly with vision charm which they only have two copies of so uh, because otherwise i just i, I have sanded swarm plus octavi on the lockdown right so all right that was very cool uh, that that worked out very well uh, yeah, great showing for, for the deck there, uh, but yeah, definitely painful mana base. We, we do see the downside of this version of the deck. I'll see you for the next round. Round number two. Another very painful hand, but it looks reasonable to me. We have some interaction. Goblin Lackey. Oof. Uh, hmm. So I guess I'm going to name Siege Gang Commander here. The worst case scenario. And we hit... Uh, my opponent's going to get another shot, but maybe we draw anything here. Would be awesome to draw anything. Wall of Roots would be the best draw. And then once we make it to four mana, we're going to be in very good shape. But we need to make it to four mana. And so far, all my mana has been painful. So opponent gets a Warchief and a Matron. I imagine they're going to get another... Oh, they can get Pile Driver here. Ringleader instead. Interesting. Okay, so this is actually super interesting. So I think I'm going to play the bird and not do anything. And if we dodge Mog Fanatic, then we're probably going to win because we just get to cast a Lure next turn. Okay, that's bad for me. Now opponent gets to play Ringleader now. And they do. Okay. So we just take this hit. Hard Charm main deck. So we're going to take this hit and we're going to hope that my opponent does not have Mog Fanatic as their one unknown. They don't play anything. Very interesting. Uh, oh, this is cool. So let's float a green mana. We're going to flashback naming Warchief and their, okay, their last card is just a mountain. So we don't need to worry about anything. We're just going to cast Lauren and then we get to go Raven Familiar. See what we find. Oh, easy game. <laughs> easy game. So now this is infinite life now. So play Spike Feeder, gain to life, cast Mana War, bounce Spike Feeder, cast Harpy, bounce Mana War. I'm just explaining to my opponent that this is just the combo. That was cool. So that was an interesting example of taking a risk and getting rewarded. So nice. So we're going to bring in this little guys in here, the extra mana war, extra feeder and aura mancer. And I think that's it. Bringing in monk realist is interesting in case my opponent, because we didn't see any green sources. So it could be that my opponent's playing mono red goblins. And if they are playing Mono Red Goblins, that's the possibility that they're playing something like Pyrostatic Pillar or um, even something like Sulfuric Vortex. So definitely don't want Octavi. I'm, I'm not going to run this card before knowing that for a fact, though. Uh, I think I may want Savo's Web as well. And we're going to 
cut the fiends because once we combo with infinite life we don't really need to take their cards so this this part of the combo is just unnecessary and i think i'm gonna take one cabal therapy this looks like a pretty good setup here so yeah let's go with this we need to be respectful of turn one lackey hmm this is an interesting defensive hand i think i'm gonna keep it uh, turn one lackey could be a problem but we can charm block let's do that the alternative could be to just once again therapy named siege gang but um obviously my opponent can just cycle hemp up the, yeah or just have fanatic here so this is obviously bad for me but it's not potentially not the end of the world unless they have siege gang exactly right now okay war chief i can potentially be uh, that's a fine draw means i don't need to take that much damage which is obviously pretty good here's the wall of roots next turn we get to bounce the war chief and then we get to name it with cabal therapy which is pretty nice another war chief that sucks we're definitely blocking there and now he on top oh okay that's pretty nice actually so how do we want to go about this i can play a second wall i think i'm gonna need siege gang commander they have incinerator oh that's a really good one to know about okay so i guess knowing that that's their last card i think i'm gonna go for raven familiar into flashback naming gem palm so play raven see what we find a wall is nice and now we're going to therapy flashback name gem palm incinerator and send the turn back that's a very good draw it's a really good draw do i need to jump here i take five because otherwise I take 10 and that just, yeah, that just destroys both City of Brasses. Yeah, so unfortunately I have to chum block here. That was a very good draw. <laughs> I think I may lose to that top deck. So let's play Wall, play Trevas Ruins, bouncing the City. I guess we go to one. Yikes. Another draw. That's not fast enough. I think I'm dead now. Yeah, any creature just kills me there. Yeah, that that pile driver was. I thought the game was 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 doing fine, and then like that pile driver though was was very very good. Um, opponent seems to be in mono red, but I think that's okay. I'm just gonna submit the same thing here. Man, goblin war chief is so strong. <laughs> Giving haste to every goblin is is that the most underrated keyword in all of premodern? I think it may be. There's not that many creatures with haste in premodern, but that is a heck of a keyword. Uh, okay, I can keep this hand. Protected against Lackey with the turn to wall. We have double survival. I'm gonna play out City of Brass because with me going turn one, nothing, it's possible my opponent wants to wasteland me. So this is kind of a bait. That's okay. Here's a wall of roots. Go. So this should lock up the ground pretty nicely. Whoa, it's nice. One, two, play Wall of Blossoms. And now we are going to play survival. Notably, still no green source for my opponent that is a problem so i think there's no reason for me to do anything here i can just untap and then mana war the war chief i guess i need so there, there's no reason to do it here but i'm gonna use the mana next turn anyway so i might as well because it gives me more options uh but because i cannot pitch squee here i'm not actually drawing a card right oh that's a good draw yeah that's very good draw so now we go black one two bone shredder kill the war chief and we send the turn back ring dealer which finds double gem palm okay <laughs> that escalated quickly don't think i'm paying echo for this because there's no need to kill this ring leader here so let's just pitch squee probably for another wall of roots yeah we could draw an earth too but i'm probably not unearthing the bone shredder anyway not the best draws i've ever seen but that's okay play another land let's survival pitch squee to go get familiar familiar and we're going to cast it there's the alluren and now we should win next turn no reason to activate the wall yet can hang out here we have a healthy amount of life opponent goes for the cycle that is one wall down opponent draws a card and i guess i use this mana to turn the wall into a cavern harpy the attack with the ringleader there seemed pretty free to me not gonna pay for echo untap get back our squee that's an interesting draw yeah okay so let's therapy i think i named pyroblast i'm not sure if this is in my opponent's deck but this is the only card that actually matters here uh, i guess goblin war chief also matters but i think my opponent would have probably cast it last turn i can also just flash back the therapy so price of progress oh my god i did not play around that one let me tell you that much well here goes nothing i guess well i guess i can't actually do that so i'm gonna have to win with that on the stack Oh, except I can't because of the Mog Fanatic. Oh, I just lose. Oh, wow. <laughs> 
I was definitely not playing around this. I was not expecting my opponent to have this. But it makes a lot of sense with their mono red deck. Well, I lose now. The Fnatic kills me. That's amazing. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, uh, here's the downside, right? Here's the downside of playing this mana base. There we know. Also, my opponent, like, <laughs> I love how my opponent like leveled me so hard. They're like, yeah, you can resolve your Cabal Therapy. There's no way you're gonna impress their progress. And they guess right. <laughs> round number three, after a very exciting round two, actually. This hand looks great, I guess. <laughs> I just hope I don't get Wasteland, let me tell you that much. Or hope that my bird doesn't get killed. Both of those things would be awesome. Drawing any land would be very exciting. Yes. Man, drawing Polar... Being against Polar and Delta is so interesting. Man, I, I can run in two days. I can run this survival in two days, which would be terrible. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to play out Trevas here. Bounce my land. And then I'm just gonna play out survival. And then actually cast the bird. This means no survival activation this turn, but I can actually cast a Lorraine on the next one, if I need to, slash one to. Opponent fetches on end step. Mental note. Oh, we're playing against the combo deck. So we can cast a Lorraine, then cast Wall of Roots and get Mesmeric Fiend. Opponent just main faces the Merchant Scroll. Yeah, this is very hot. So now we... Sure. <laughs> uh, okay, let's... I guess let's, let's do that instead. So we're going to play Wall of Roots and then... Cabal Therapy, Naming Intuition. None of those cards are particularly threatening. So we're just going to pass the turn and we're going to win next turn. One thing we need to be worried about is the fact... I don't think my opponent can kill me from here, not with the hand they have. So I don't think there's any reason to flashback therapy here. And one thing that it's notable is that I can pivot if I need to and I can just go survival for Mesmeric. But because I'm going to be using a lot of mana next turn, I think that I'm not supposed to flashback there. But I need to be wary of the fact that my opponent can... Yeah, so this is very interesting. So I'm going to have to actually do this now because my opponent can wish for Brain Freeze. They're one minute short, so never mind. I guess it doesn't quite work for them. But now I can flashback this coming turn. So now we get Squeep. And now we're gonna get Raven Familiar. And now this turn, get back our Squee. I guess we can flashback Therapy now. Sucking one of these. We name Cunning Wish. Actually, I think it's better for me to name Impulse. Because as we said, my opponent does not have enough mana to Cunning Wish into... So they cannot wish for Brain Freeze, meaning that potentially they can Impulse into a Brain Freeze. I don't know if they have any main deck Brain Freezes. They probably do. So by getting rid of the Impulse, we just don't have to worry about that anymore. And now we get to combo comfortably. There's still the potential concern that they opt into it. I'm not super worried. So let's start by doing this main phase, because I may find a land, and finding a land means I get to trade both of these. I can go for uh, the other guy, the... Mesmeric Fiend. When it does cast the Cunning Wish for Chain of Vapor. Interesting. So this just means that I combo next turn. And now they don't have a Cunning Wish anymore. So this seems just totally fine to me. I don't need to do anything. Like my opponent now has a very low base to go off of. I guess a basic forest. But don't really need any of those cards. Uh, okay. So pass the turn back. We're going to win next turn now. I don't think my opponent has enough resources to win from here. Maybe they can go something like find a you know, Delta for a basic swamp then Kabbalah Ritual, and kind of go from there. Maybe they can do something like that. Or potentially, like, duress my Allure in here. That would actually be kind of annoying. Main face up. Yeah, my opponent knows that this is the turn. Like, this is the last turn they're going to have. Mental note. So now they have deep analysis that I know about, and they have three unknowns, and they have to win right now. Oof, LED is scary. Mm, oh my god. Am I dead here? Am I dead to Ill Gotten Gates? Oh no, because they... I, I guess they can draw... Dark Ritual into Will God and Gains. That would have been kind of sick, actually. Okay, so, oh my god. My opponent can... I kind of want my opponent to get there here. <laughs> Will God and Gains of the top? One time? Wow, this is so exciting. Cunning Wish? Okay, no more blue mana. Will God and Gains is a sorcery, right? Yeah, it is, it's a sorcery. Oh man, they were so close. Wow. That was very exciting. <laughs> that was cool. All right, uh, definitely want these cards. Uh, probably want Withered Wretch. I don't think my opponent can win with a Wretch on board. 
Anything else? We'll cut Bone Shredder probably. I do wonder if my opponent has their own duresses. We can cut the Wall of Blossoms. I guess Suktavi can make can potentially mess them up. If they want to play around duress on their LED, then I can Octavi the LED, so maybe it's worth playing. I'm honestly not sure. Just cut one on Earth here. I don't think Sanded Swarm is actually worth it. I don't think my opponent has any way to their interaction is probably going to be these card spells, but I don't know. The Auromancer is interesting as a consideration. But yeah, this is a deck, uh, super sweet deck, by the way, that top hated uh, Euro Champs. Very, very sweet. This hand has no interaction. It's kind of slow. I think I'm going to mulligan. I think I need to be better than that. Uh, this is better. <laughs> uh, keep this, and I'm going to bottom the Undiscovered Paradise, I think. Gemstone Mine. Turn 1 LED. So I think I'm actually going to go with Birds on turn 1. That LED is very scary, that's for sure. And there was actually a turn one kill at Eurochamps, which was very, very exciting. But this turn we get to go probably survival into therapy. I do feel like I need to use therapy. If I draw any creature, I'm probably going to go uh, therapy into wall, actually. That's a land. So yeah, let's just go therapy. And I think I'm naming intuition here. Ha. Huh. Well, we whiffed. Oh, opponent's hand is really scary. I think I'm going to cast survival and pass the turn so i'm gonna give my opponent one turn to kill me but i don't think so my goal here is to go cabal therapy next turn i get to go cast the Luren, then cabal therapy and then cast wall of roots and then i can go uh, i can actually if i draw any creature i can use wall to go find mesmeric fiend opponent casts impulse uh, that's kind of a costly impulse my opponent's mana base being double gems on mine Kind of rough. Okay, my opponent's going for it, looks like. Dark Red. It's pretty surprising how little that deck needs to go off. Like, one ill-gotten gains is just lethal here. Oh, so they're they're yellowing. Okay. <laughs> no more cards. So this opt is going to need to find... This impulse is going to need to find some, some good stuff. So if they impulsed into ill-gotten gains, we would be dead. But they whiffed. So I guess we win now. Well, I guess now I don't have to do this anymore. So I just set up the combo for the following turn. So we just pass the turn and I'm just going to use survival to go get Squee plus something else. Like, I don't think my opponent can win from this base. I think we're in the clear. So pitch wall, get Squee, pitch Squee, get familiar, untap, get back Squee, play a land, and cast Lauren. Cast Raven familiar. And now we will eventually find this Merrick Fiend. Pitch this here. Go get Cavern Harpy. Cast Harpy. I guess I should flash flashback therapy here before doing anything else. So bounce this. And we're just going to flashback Harpy now. And we're going to name Brain Freeze, which is the only way that we lose. My opponent has Orange Chant. It's not enough to win. Cast this again. Get Spike Feeder. And now we just combo off. And um, I'm just being lazy here. This is obviously not the proper way to do this. The proper way to do this works like this, where you cast the therapy first, and then with this trigger on the stack, you cast the Raven Familiar. So the reason to do that is so you get to play around. The reason to do that is you get to play around removal. But yeah, I'm just being lazy and just doing stuff at random times. Okay, we got there. Uh, definitely interesting stuff. Very interesting stuff. My opponent did get a little bit unlucky there. I mean, th it was kind of like a YOLO. Like, we were s well set up enough that they really were forced to go off in that scenario where they were not necessarily comfortable to be able to do so. But, uh, yeah, it w it looked very promising. Like, they both times they were a single card away from just winning, which is very cool. Round number four against Fed, And this hand is quite interesting. If I find a Black Source, this hand looks great. But I think I'm going to ship it. If I had a survival, I would be more interested in doing that. But now this is a very interesting hand. I think I keep this one and I just hope that I find one of my 18 green sources, I think. So bottom the mana war because the unearth can actually give me some value. Play important on the other side of things. I'm assuming this is mono blue dreadnought. This hand does not seem likely to beat mono blue dreadnought. Every time your ported opponent doesn't cantrip, bad, bad vibes. We also drew one of our non green sources. <laughs> uh, okay, so it is Monoblue Dead Knot, and I think I'm just going to concede to hide information, because I cannot really win from here. So let's go with all of these, and I'm assuming that I'm against Mono Blue. so I'm going to cut the Bone Shredder, I'm going to cut some Unearths, because I'm going to be bringing in Duress and Therapy. 
Mesmeric Fiend sounds great. We can cut some Willow Blossoms. And I guess I want an extra Mana War. Definitely want the Gilded Drake. I'm just going to cast an Allure, uh, cut an Allure in. Oh, the Naturalizes, right. Probably want some Naturalizes. So cut some more Allurens. Mana War is pretty good against Dreadnought, but not good enough, I don't think. Like, I'd rather have some Naturalizes instead. And here we cut... I don't want to cut Birds, because my opponent is going to... Not entirely unlikely to be bringing in the Tithe package. What Angleton is neat. I'm just going to cut a bird. Not super stoked about it, but I have a bunch of early drops here. We get to be on the play now. Is this hand good enough? This is basically a mulligan. I do love the duress, though. I guess I keep this. But I don't think that I duress on turn one. This punishes me if I find exactly survival off the top. But I think it's better for me to slow roll this duress and play it on turn two. Because I get to look at one more card from his hand. And it's not like he can daze the duress anyway, so... I guess it would have also been punishing if I find Cabal Therapy as well. Interesting. So I guess here I take the Vision Charm. Kind of an interesting spot, but by taking the Vision Charm there, I force him to use his cantrips to find lands. I would have definitely, definitely cast Portent or Tarnoir there and try to look for a land. Because now he's forced to, yeah, he's forced to opt here because he needs to hit a land drop. He, he did get there, but like, had he whiffed, that would have being kind of a disaster, right? So he, he took a riskier line, which um, I don't think I agree with it. That foil is very threatening, though. Once again, he found three cards that he's happy with, and we did not find land, so... Yeah, it's not looking good. Not looking good at all. We could very easily just get comboed out here. Okay, we're going to play Raven Familiar, which we can't pay Echo for, <laughs> which is kind of awkward, because <laughs> the land we drew is one that doesn't allow us to do that. Uh, I think I'm going to take a land here over the Aluren. I'm nowhere close to setting up the combo because this familiar is going to die. So I'd rather just find the land and allow me to continue developing my mana. Not finding a blue source there is kind of brutal. So now they get to flash this turn and then they're going to get to flash again on the following turn. So this is not looking great. Gush into make a land drop. So if he has the combo here, he can do it with foil backup. But it looks like he may not have it. Passes the turn. I'm going to try to not play anything this turn if I can. Discards Flash of Insight. Oh my god, the value. Say no to that one. And I'm just going to pass the turn. So next turn we're going to get to Cabal Therapy. Naming Foil. He's casting the Flash. So he's looking for whatever piece he's missing here. I imagine here comes the Dreadnought. Vision Charm is kind of brutal. She stifles though. Interesting. So untap. That's not a bad draw actually. Cabal Therapy you. We're going to name Foil. Ooh, he foils between Island Stifle. So I'm going to cast Mana War here. He can foil this, he can Vision Charm this, he can stifle the trigger. Multiple things he can do here, he daces. Okay, that's fine. So we're going to take a hit, and then next turn we're going to Cabal Therapy again. And we're going to hope that it's good enough. That's a nice one. Is that good enough, though? Cabal Therapy, Counterspell. So I guess I just... So I have to choose what I want to play around here. So I can play around Daze. I, I mean, I, I cannot play around this foil, obviously, if he's, if he's, uh, if two of his last, I know one of them is foiled, if I, he has another island, and then any other card, then we lose. So, we have to figure out what we want to play around as the third card. So it can be another Daze, in which case we want to naturalize. If it's Vision Charm, then we want to naturalize on Upkeep. If it is counter spell then we want to naturalize right now so i guess we're playing around my opponent having two cards because one of them cannot be an island because if it's an island we just lose so it's between this vision charm or counter spell and based on what we have here we have seen only one counter spell we have seen only one vision charm we have seen two stifles i think i want to upkeep naturalize this place around vision charm the problem is vision charm i guess kills me next turn anyway Vision Charm kills me next turn anyway, so I cannot play around Vision Charm. Because if, if I Vision Charm on my opponent's upkeep, then on my opponent's, that saves them from the Octavius and Mana Wars. So I, I guess I have to do this now. And I get God by days. And we hope that that's good enough. Okay, Stifle. That's the third Stifle. So this was the least likely thing for him to have there. But I guess it is what he had, so... 
Unfortunate that we could not get another creature into play. Like, our, I was actually going thinking of paying for the Raven Familiar, but um, yeah, we could not quite get there. Uh, that's brutal. All right, so there goes there goes that match. Very interesting, actually. It was it was a very interesting match. Once again, we kind of got punished by these hunters covered paradise. Like it put us back a little bit, but yeah, it, I mean it's it's the cost of this worse mana base. Maybe I was supposed to naturalize there. I I think I like doing this better. Like it's less likely for him to have stifle than anything else. Anyway, see you for the next round. Round number five. His hand looks pretty good. Let's keep this. I can actually go about this in a multiple different ways i think i'm gonna go for just turn one play my land turn two mesmeric fiend and then go from there i think i'm leaving on the land or wastes if my opponent's playing a wasteland deck this is not gonna be a good one but i think it's fine underground river duress well that's gonna take my survival that's bad for me hey look at that perfect nailed it okay so now we get to mesmeric fiend take a peek at what my opponent's cooking with over there well i guess we take the duress here yeah, so we take the duress. This forces my opponent to smother the mesmeric fiend. But then this coming turn, I get to mana leak. I get to uh, cabal therapy the mana leak and then resolve survival. So therapy you, opponent fetches, basic cow, and I assume they're just gonna mana leak here. Yeah, okay. So mana leak resolves, obviously not gonna pay. And then we float the mana, play Travis Ruins, and now we get to resolve survival and pass the turn. I'm honestly not really worried about much that my opponent can do here. Now we're going to be able to ride this survival, get a lot of value from it. Sure, my opponent gets to resolve a tog here. This is nice. Cool. So I guess we just flashback therapy on Smother. So we get to cast Raven Familiar. We get to draw a card. Uh, interesting. I think I'm going to take Wall of Blossoms. I don't think that we're really in the market for for alluring yet we'll get there eventually second psychotog uh that's kind of annoying but it's still still kind of whatever huh they go for portent instead interesting so now we're just gonna start to just play mana wars and start bouncing my opponent's stuff i can also just play random walls so we're gonna take this hit that's fine opponent gets to draw a card uh okay so let's play a wall see what we draw well, they mana leak this? Pretty happy about that, actually. So we're going to pass the turn. Uh, do I attack or not? I don't think I'm chum blocking this turn. I may chum block next turn, though. Now we're just going to start playing a slow value game. Opponent cycles the Twisted Abomination. Play the Swamp. I'm going to take the hit here. This is nowhere close to lethal. And step. We're going to get Squee. I think we just get another wall, actually. And now we start drawing cards with Squee. Play wall. Cavern Harpy is interesting. Cavern Harpy is super interesting. So now we get to start drawing cards. Or I can just start mana warring my opponent's board. Foth main face, okay. Huh, this is interesting. So Counterspell we kind of care about, but not really. And Ghastly Demise we kind of care about, but not really. So I think I'm going to give them... I'm going to split like this because the real cards that I care about here are the lands. I don't really care about these spells. Opponent takes the spells. Okay, cool. Good for me. Opponent with no attack. Interesting. So now I just get to get rid of my opponent's clock altogether, which is nice. Just go get Mana War. Untap. Say yes. This is nice because it's a painless source. So I kind of like that. Play Mana War. Bounce the Psychotog. And this is why I wanted to make sure that I'm not um, getting got by, by the mana, right? Like my opponent's super pinned on mana like if they do stuff then they don't develop their board and they don't clock me so now they have a counter spell in hand which is basically uncastable <laughs> and if they redeploy the psychic dog i just bounce it again so now my opponent's in a spot where they cannot really do anything because like whatever they do just kind of doesn't matter and now we're just gonna redeploy the the mana war and now we start to draw cards with Raven Familiar. So my opponent's in a really awkward spot. Now we draw an Earth. Nice. Gonna cast Mana War. Bounce the Tog again. We get to swing for three. And I'm just gonna cast the Raven Familiar, I guess. Now I think I would take something like... Ooh, another Unearth. Yeah, sure, I'll take another Unearth. Play my land and pass the turn. My opponent doesn't even cast a Ghastly Demise. Yeah, so now they play another Tog. Once again, doesn't really matter. And I get to basically get... Mesmeric Fiend, and I can just take the counter spell here. So, do I care about saving the familiar? I don't think so. Because I have double an earth in hand, so I'd rather this be in the graveyard. I cast the Mesmeric Fiend. My opponent kind of has to counter this. Oh, they just let it go. Uh, 
Interesting. I guess I do take the counter spell anyway. Then we unearth Mana War. Just kind of going the beat down plan here. The opponent can gush, just attempt to YOLO here, but like it doesn't even matter. Like even if this gets countered, I just go get another Mana War and cast it. So, okay. So do I want to unearth again? I guess if I unearth again, I get to deploy this Wall of Roots, which I'm interested in doing. So I'll just do that, I guess. Also, it protects me from the rest. So this was like, you know, we never drew a Lurin. Doesn't matter. This is why I like this version of the deck so much. We're just playing like a silly tempo game with dudes, but like I'm just continuously bouncing my opponent. Like my opponent had three Psychotogs, never got to stick one into play. And I just beat them down with one ones and two twos and it was good enough. This happens a surprising, <laughs> surprisingly large amount of the time. Okay, so I do like Scented Swarm. Yeah, I do like Gilded Drake. I also like Mana War. Definitely do not like Bone Shredder. <laughs> This one not a fan of. Uh, Duresses are cool. Cabal Therapy is also interesting. I don't think I would care about Wither the Wretch. I don't think that doesn't. Oh, actually they have Reanimate, so never mind, yeah. Wither the Wretch actually matters. Uctavi... I mean, can they? Can their Psychedog deck have... Can their Psychedog deck have a, a Curse Totem? Nah, no way, right? Nobody could be so brave <laughs> to play to play Curse Totem in the Psychedog deck. That's, that's just not a thing. Okay, so we have our Mana Wars, our Familiars, and Earth, as we just saw, is kind of nice. Uh, I guess I cut some number of birds. Do I cut them all? I don't think so. Oromancer probably won't as well. They're not going to be able to answer my survivals on the board, but they're going to be able to survive uh, to answer them on the stack. Wall of Blossom seems surprisingly annoying for them. Same with Wall of Blossom. I think I'm just going to cut the birds. Fine. What's the 61st card here? I guess the Oromancer. I feel like all my other cards are better than the Oromancer, so... Uh, we have good mana, but this... I guess we don't even have good mana, never mind. Mulligan. Uh, we don't have black mana. Uh, this one's good, though. So I think we can keep this and bottom the CD of Brass. Duress would be annoying, but this is a pretty painless hand. Love that. So next turn, we get to Mesmeric Fiend. Take a look at what my opponent's cooking with. No second land. That's rough. I'm still gonna Fiend instead of Survival because of the possibility of an all. No second line. Yeah, I feel like this this deck... Wait, oh, wait, what? That's super weird. I think I'm, I'm definitely... I mean, we're gonna be playing a longer game, so I'm definitely taking Gush there. Going to... I mean, we, if, if I go for Survival and allow my opponent to counter it, it's just so bad for me. So I'm just gonna pass the turn, just do nothing, have my opponent sit on a counter spell, and then on the following turn... I will just be able to cast survival into another survival. So what, what, I, what I'm really scared about there is the fact that my opponent can go ahead and just uh, use... Okay, they're going to reanimate Twisted Abomination. That's cute. So, not, I mean, we kind of got punished a little bit there. Not going to lie, but this is fine, though. So play survival. This has to get countered. So there goes the counter spell, the spell that we wanted them to counter. And now here's the second survival. Going to send the turn back. Take a hit for five, it's totally fine. Now they play one of the Psychotogs. And now we begin accruing some value. So we're going to discard. I think we just discard the Fiend. Go get Squee, play Trevas. I guess we don't need to do this now. We can just cast the Mana War now. I guess I want to bounce the Twisted Abomination. It allows them to draw another card, which is a little bit annoying because they can just cycle it, cycle it now. I'll take a hit, no problem there. Opponent can get a couple of damages in AK. It's pretty cool. So we know about Twisted Rumination. We know about Second Psychotog. And then two unknowns. We could go get Withered Wretch. I guess I could be taking lethal if my opponent... If my opponent is able to kill the Mesmeric Fiend. And they gush. Nah, there, there's no way they're going to be able to deal 14. They're going to be able to deal... A lot, though. So unfortunately, this game actually got cancelled because uh, MDGO went into maintenance. But what we decided, even though I was very far ahead and Rick just said that he would just give me the win, we still thought that the match was interesting. So we are going to go ahead and still play, uh, once again, games number uh, two and three. I thought of Engineer Plague, so I don't remember if I cited in Monk Realist for the previous game, but I probably want to have access to it now. So we're going to be doing that. And then we're going to cut some number of Alurans, a couple of birds. Oh, I think I ended up cutting all of the birds, if I remember. 
correctly. Though I kind of want bird over maybe Willow of Blossoms. Yeah, maybe birds are better than Willow of Blossoms. There we go. So this hand looks fine. I do love that we have Mana War. We have some clean, painless mana, which is nice. Uh, the rest here would be brutal because it would take our survival. So that part would suck. But also having two Allurance is not super great, honestly. Like this is very much not an, an Allurean matchup. Opponent cast Portent on one. Uh, right, so we're gonna play Evan Maya Coast and pass the turn back. Therapy is not a bad draw here. Should be pretty decent and clear in the way. So we do have to be worried about counter spell here. I am going to just play the wall. If my opponent counters it, then whatever. But otherwise now, you know, they kind of wasted their turn. Ah, they got to cycle. They're gonna reanimate here. Phyrexian Furnace. It's a little bit annoying, but it's not that bad, honestly. I just cast a Lurin here. I kind of want to cast a Lurin just as bait. It may very well backfire. But I think I'm just going to, because I'm not really using my mana otherwise. So I'm just going to cast it so my opponent uses Counterspell on it, really. Oh, it just resolved. So I'm going to go all the way to their upkeep. So now my opponent can play a Psychotog for free. That's fine. Oh, two Psychotogs. Okay, so draw step. I will cast Mesmeric Fiend. Let's see what my opponent's got. Duress and Ghastly Demise. Yeah, we're going to take the... I guess I'll take the Duress. So now my opponent can just use Ghastly Demise on the Mesmeric Fiend if they want and Duress me. But I'm forcing them to use the Ghastly Demise on a stupid 1-1. So we have infinite mana now. So I can just block here, force my opponent to like waste a bunch of resources. Or otherwise just give me a free block. Now we untap. And my opponent let me untap. This is huge. So now I just get to cast Survival knowing that it will resolve. And we will pass the turn again. I guess I can attack with Mesmeric Fiend. Might as well. I'm gonna make the same block once again. I guess what I could have done there is... Huh, that's interesting, because what I could have done is... Oh, okay, so they're gonna gush now. So what I can do is I can pitch this Mana War. So I'm going to do this now and pitch Mana War to get a bird. And then if I find any creature, if I find any creature off of the Raven Familiar. So this is a little bit of a risky line. Oh no, I guess it doesn't work because I have they have ghastly demise. Yeah, I, I guess I messed this up actually. We did find a mana war though. So this is nice. So now we can just sit here. Opponent is activating some togs. Ha, huh, this is very funny. So ghastly demise only destroys creatures with toughness equal, but now they only have one. So I'm, I would be forced if they want to kill my familiar, I'd be forcing them to discard, which is hilarious. I'm just gonna let the wall die. Reanimate. So we will untap and now. This is interesting, because I can just pay the Echo. My opponent can discard the card and use Ghastly Demise, because I can just pitch Mana War to Survival, get Squee, pitch Squee to get Harpy. I guess I can just get the Harpy, because the Harpy just bounces itself. Yeah, I think I just get the Harpy, because we can just cast the Harpy now. My opponent uses Ghastly Demise to kill the Raven Familiar. They have to kill it, because otherwise I just went Furnace, taking care of the mana war. Okay, but this is also just fine, because this now means... Yeah, so now they use the Demise on the bird. Now the Harpy is going to bounce itself, because I can just recast it if I want to, and I can recast it and bounce the Mesmeric Fiend. So this is actually very interesting. Okay, this is now good enough, because I can just cast Harpy, bounce Mesmeric Fiend, pitch Mesmeric Fiend to survival, and now we win. Oh, actually, I can do the trick. Oh, this is this is funny because I, I can just play around days by just doing this beforehand. So we're going to cast Mesmeric Fiend, hold priority, cast Cavern Harpy, bounce Fiend. This is going to allow us to look at their hand and just exile a card forever. Uh, oh, look at that snuff out. Uh, but yeah, the other cards just don't do anything. So now we just pitch Mesmeric Fiend to go get familiar. And now we do the thing. This was fun. This was very cool. This matchup looked very good <laughs> for us. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so we can... Any, at any point we find the creature, we have two mana to use to to pitch it to survival to go get the Spike Feeder and Mana War, and then we win from there. All right, cool. That was that was fun. All right, so this was really the last match. It looks okay. We have a Painless Mana Base. We have an early bird. We got some Mesmeric Fiend action. Something like Burn. This hand would suck against, barring that specific scenario, which would be pretty disastrous. Maybe goblins is also not great. My opponent plays a wooded foothills. Danger, danger. Basic mountain, danger. <laughs> Lightning bolt. Annoying. Very annoying. 
uh, <laughs> that's kind of a funny draw. I think I'm going to play the Mesmeric Fiend here. Uses my mana more efficiently. I could go Birth into Unearth the Birth, but that seems kind of a waste. Oh my god, okay, my opponent's cooking over there. Fiery Temper. That's very nice. This is some sort of Red Green Madness stuff, I guess. If I take the Bolt, my opponent plays a Lava Mancer. I think I take the Lava Mancer and I force my opponent to Bolt the Mesmeric Fiend. I, I was going to say clears the way for the bird, but not really, because then there's going to be a Lava Monster in play, which is pretty bad for us. What this card spell? What, what this card can they have? Like, I would assume they need, they have Wild Mongrel, but what else can they have in Red and Green? Because, like, I actually thought about this space. I thought about a Red Green Madness style deck. The problem is, after you are through with Wild, Wild Mongrel, every single other enabler that you can have it's horrendous <laughs> so because of that like that, that makes things really awkward because you are forced to play really bad cards um but yeah let's let, uh, i'm really interested to see what my opponent is cooking with over there this is interesting i guess i get a familiar here just so i can keep digging i'm gonna let this familiar go so i can unearth it and like do the same thing next turn but so i guess getting a forest is more interesting in that case yeah let's go with that that may be wrong but i think i'm going to need my green mana so there's the basic forest and my opponent just plays out the root walla not the sexiest thing i've ever seen so my opponent just kills the raven familiar there that's great for me <laughs> that's extremely good for me let's unearth now uh, let's see what we find because if i find a survival or something oh cabal therapy cannot cabal therapy the fire temper brutal uh i guess i'll take this spike feeder that's hilarious though what to do here i think i'm gonna play out a bird and say go i know it's very mana inefficient but i really want to use spike feeder like i, I don't need to i don't want to expose the spike feeder seems like a little bit of a waste yeah getting the getting the rule while into play seems interesting Opponent goes for the Grim, killing the bird. That's fine. Okay, so they just top deck Wild Mongrel. Must be nice. Uh, once again, I think I'm just going to let this Familiar go. I could pay the Echo. Yeah, I'll just pay the Echo. This just forces my opponent to waste a card on this now. I guess I should have left the Black Source. Okay, that's not a bad draw at all. So now I'm going to leave the Ruin Familiar back to chill. But I should have left the Black Source because I may have found uh, Cabal Therapy off the top. And it's more likely that I find Cabal Therapy or another on Earth than I find one of my Birth of Paradise, which is the only card that I can cast off green. So we're in an interesting spot here. My opponent can just fire a temper to kill this thing and just attack through Frantic Surge. That's value. Okay, so now, now we know what other enablers they're using. There you just have. There are actually Splashing Blue, which I'm surprised by. This is pretty good value, though. They get to go face with Fiery Temper and, like, Lava Mancer, the Raven Familiar. Or just go with the Raven Familiar and save the Lava Mancer activation for later. Yeah, this is pretty good for my opponent. Yeah, if I were them, I would definitely just, like, YOLO here. Like, I would pump one of the Rudwalas and, like, swing with Mongrel. Like, try to kill me as fast as possible. Another Mongrel. Oof. Okay. So now, take four. No cards in hand. We're going to maybe draw Lurin. Mana War. Okay, so we're definitely playing Wall. And I guess I can just cast Mana War here. Do I have time to cast Familiar instead? Yeah, I think I'll do that. So play Familiar. This is also a Charm Blocker, which is very nice. Get to draw a card. Hopefully find the Lurin. We don't. Cavern Harpy is not the worst. But unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be able to pay the Echo for this Familiar. So I'm, if, if I find the Lurin... I guess if I find the Lurin, I just gain infinite life. So it doesn't really matter. When it plays out the land instead of discarding to Wild Mongrel to activate Lava Mancer, right? Don't like that. So here I'm just gonna block the root wallas. They actually represent more ma more uh, life because my opponent has no cards in hand. So that was a little bit of a mistake. They should have just they should have just uh, let the, the uh, keep the, the the card in hand to this card. Can I find a Lauren survival? Yeah, that's something. Okay, so what's the best way to go about this? Man, like this city of brass is killing me. So I use mana war bounce the wild mongrel. Go down to five. I have to play spike feeder this turn i think this means i cannot combo but i think i could be dead otherwise so yeah so let's just play survival here this is not looking great though like i need to find a Lauren basically this turn my opponent just keeps on <laughs> playing the lands so i think what i'm gonna do here is i'm just going to use spike feeder to gain four and then i'm going to discard octavi to get spike feeder this brings me up to nine 
with a block, which is nice. And then I have to assume that I'm going to top deck exactly Alluring, because that's the only way that I can realistically win. I don't think that there's any way that I can just get some value on the way there. Um, if I block the Mongrel, I can just not activate Survival this turn, or force my opponent to activate the Grim, which I guess is fine. So this is 3, 4, 5, maximum 6, 7 damage. So they pump Rudwala and they pump the other one. So I'm just gonna gain two, gain two again, up to nine, go to damage. If my opponent attempts to kill the Wall of Roots, which they can using Grim, then I'm going to go for Pitch Octavi to get Spike Feeder. So make a mana, Pitch Octavi, get Spike Feeder. And now we have to top the Galurin. If we top the Galurin, we win. And if we don't, we're just gonna die to their board. Galurin one time? No, I don't think that does anything. I could play Mana War, bounce one of these dudes. Yeah, it just doesn't do enough. On to game number two. What do we want here? Another Mana War sounds good. Another Spike Feeder also sounds good. Octavi, bad. Bone Shredder would have actually been reasonable. Mesmeric Fiend, no need. Do we want Duress or a Mancer? Probably. I'm going to expect some amount of Naturalize effects. Wither the Wretch doesn't really do much unless they have anger in their deck, which they very well could. I'm just not super in love with the Cabal Therapies. I don't feel like they do enough. So I'm gonna cut, I guess I'm gonna cut them all. And then we bring in Weird the Wretch, I guess, Monk Realist and Octavi. What could they have in red and green? I don't think there's, I guess Monk Realist because of Sulfuric Vortex, it's possible they have Vortex. Octavi, just as a creature, really, <laughs> doesn't do that much. Just a, just a three mana, two, two. Yeah, kind of weird. I don't really know how to cyborg against my opponent's deck. We're on the play. This hand looks pretty good. So let's keep the hand. We can go turn one, basic, turn two, survival. And then we're going to hope to combo on three. On four, I mean. Wither the Wretch does not do much. Uh, but it's it's okay because it's, it's just a random creature that now I can just pitch to survival to go get a Wall of Roots. So this is a fine draw. The, the Wither Wretch, that is. Attack for one. You got me. Nice. So... Basically the combo. Man, a Wall of Roots really works over time in this deck. I guess I can pitch one of these Mana Wars for Squee and then activate again next turn. My opponent doing nothing there makes me think that it's very unlikely that they can beat me here. Not gonna block here because I... I guess that this decks to Bolt anyway, so I might as well block. Yeah, if this is the best thing my opponent can do, then... I'm very okay with this. So we just go get another Wall of Roots. We just take it super slow. And this is the issue when I was, as I was saying, that I was brewing in this space. Uh, this was the problem, is the fact that you like, w you need to draw your enablers, but your deck is not very good at drawing those enablers. <laughs> so yeah, it's a little bit rough. It's a little bit rough. I think it's cool. Fiery Temper is such a such a great card. Aqua Amoeba. It's been a minute since I've seen one of these. My opponent can just discard any random card just so they can activate the Lava Man. Yeah, I'll take one. This time around, I'm not going to block. Force my opponent to use two cards. But now we actually have enough mana to just win straight up. So let's get Cavern Harpy here. Now we're on tap. Get a Bakar Squee. And here's a Lurin. And now we actually have to play our own removal, so I'm going to play the Cavern Harpy first. My opponent could have Pyroblast. If they have Pyroblast, then they counter this on the stack, but... So we actually do have the piece that we're missing. It's just free to do this. But we, we have successfully comboed here. Like, I don't think my opponent can do anything at all. So now we draw these. Then we put you in life. And now we have more than enough life. I'm looking for a land here just so I can uh, close this out. And now we get to... Uh, I'll take a Wall of Roots. So the, the thing here is going to be to make sure that I have enough Mana Wars in hand so that my opponent cannot interact with the combo whatsoever. They only have two mana available, and I'm going to ensure that they can't interact. Cast another Raven. But yeah, I'm going to get a Painless Green Source. Um, rather take the Mana War. But yeah, here we are locked. Trevas Ruins will do. Play Trevas, bounce this, and now we have it locked up. My opponent's kind enough to concede after seeing the full combo assembled, and we move on to game number three. So we honestly did not really seem to find anything that may want me change my game plan. Like, I don't think I care about Gilded Drake. Honestly, giving my opponent a 3-3 three is, <laughs> is kind of a problem. So, yeah, we're, we're not going to do that. I'm just going to submit the same thing. 
Maybe this is better than Uktabi, but again, like not knowing what my opponent is doing, it's really, really hard for me to figure something out here. Maybe Duress is worth it. Man, this is a sketchy one, but I think I'm gonna keep. But yeah, my opponent could have something like Price of Progress, which we have already gotten blown out by <laughs> in this very league. Uh, this hand is a little bit slow, but I think it's okay. Looks like my opponent's hand is also not the fastest. Oromancer, not great. Now we get to cast Survival on two. And what I really want to do is draw lands. I do like that my mana is so far painless. Mana War, not a great draw. Here's a survival, go. Wall of Roots would be another fantastic draw. Okay, there's the Naturalize. That's certainly a problem. But if I draw land into land, we should be good. Because I can just Oromancer, get back the survival, threaten something that way. No attacks with the Lava Man. My opponent is certain that I will find my land here. It's not it. Yeah, I, I still think this hand is worth keeping. Because the upside is so high, especially having double spike feeder. If I find any land in the first four draw steps, three, I guess three draw steps, even four drops, that should be fine. Uh, but if I do, then I have, you know, that I, this just gives me such a nice life buffer that I do think that keeping the hand is worth it. But yeah, obviously not finding the land is kind of a big deal. Okay, this is obviously super brutal here. I guess I should have banned one of these allurans. Like, I'm not going to cast them, so... My opponent just delivering the slow beatdowns. All right, Wall of Roots. That's a card that does anything. Probably blocking one of... If I block Grim Lavamancer, I take three. This is one, two, seven. So I go to one. And then I lose to any bolt. So I think it's better for me to block the Wild Mongrel. My opponent can discard three cards to kill my wall, which would suck. But yeah, okay, so they had the bolt. So I would have died if I hadn't blocked there, so... That's enough. That's enough. Sad way to go, honestly. <laughs> but that's that. All right, everybody, we finished up with a kind of middling result of three and three, but uh, some interesting thoughts. The first thing is that uh, I really like the deck. The second thing is that the mana base is a lot worse. It's not just a little bit worse, it's a lot, lot, lot worse. And we did see that uh, showing up multiple times where we just had like way too many CDO brasses, which we unfortunately need in order to make the color requirements work. The Goblins matchup that we lost, I feel like it would have been 100% won had I been playing the, the other version of the deck instead. Due to just having more basics, having the fetch lands, it would have made that price of progress not just cheese me out of the game immediately. So the downside is very, very much there. And I don't know how much better we can make that. Like, you're just going into this knowing that this is the risk, right? If you are a Cabal Therapy casting uh, fan, then if you want to play Allure, you need to be aware that this is the price that you're pl that you're paying. And Earth was actually pretty sick. Like, we drew it, like, two times only, maybe, like, one or once even. But when I did, I felt like it was doing something very, very good, uh, which is which is very, very cool to see. Besides that, my Smurf King did, did some decent job and Bone Shredder actually did, uh, did, did some work as well. We did even, uh, in, in that very last game against uh, the Psychotog deck, we were in, even able to see the, the Mesmeric Fiend plus Common Harpy combo in action, which is pretty cool. Overall, I have to say that I'm not super crazy impressed. Uh, Meddling Mage is somewhat similar to Cabal Therapy, better in some aspects, worse in some aspects. Like, we did see Cabal Therapy do, do some pretty good work, I will say that much. And uh, and we also did see Mesmeric Fiend do some work, but uh, overall, I do feel like the, the, the mana base cost is just a little bit too steep to, 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 to deal with. Like, I, I feel like the cost to the mana is a little bit too much. Not only in, in terms of the actual pain that we took and the amount of non-basics that we were running, but also in the fact that we could not really use, for example, we got Pert against Dreadnought twice, and like the second time around, I had like therapies, or like I don't remember if I had therapy or the rest in hand, but I, you know, had I had a source to plowshares, I feel like it would have been a much better experience. So like even in those kind of scenarios, therapy is great and everything, but sometimes source of plowshares just does the job better. The same thing is true against Lackey. Uh, with this deck, we were forced into just like playing a bird and hoping to chum block, which did not work. Whereas, you know, otherwise we can just draw source of plowshares and just plow the, the, the Lackey and just move on with our lives, you know? That kind of stuff is, is really easy to ignore when in reality that is what makes the Treva version of this deck so good in my opinion. Th those are my thoughts on, on this. Well, I do want to make sure that I get this point across but like I'm not saying that this is like a worse version of the other one. I'm not saying that 
this cannot be improved further. What I'm saying is the cost is too high for my liking. And I feel like for me personally, the other version just works better, not only because it has much better mana, but also because I love casting Melly Mage much more than I love casting Cabal Therapy. So keep that in mind. I do think that if you're a Cabal Therapy fiend to, <laughs> to, to, to call you somehow, then I do think that this is worth exploring further and it's worth trying to figure out, okay, where's the limit? Like, how far can I push it? How risky can I make my mana? Four CD Brass was a lot, and maybe there's a way to not play four, maybe you can figure something else out instead. All I will say is that future leagues that I play with Learn are much, much, much more likely to be uh, with the Treva version as opposed to, to this one right here. Uh, that being said, this was fun, as it always is with Aluren, and I do think that the Mana War in the sideboard and the Spike Feeder in the sideboard were, were kind of neat. So that's going to be it for me, folks. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget that if you really enjoy the content, not only you can hit the like and subscribe button, which would help me a lot, but if you would like to help support the, the channel, you can uh, actually become a patron in the link in the description down below. And you can uh, join one of the, you know, like the smaller tiers. Or if you want to really support, if you re really enjoy my content, you can join one of the, the, the bigger tiers as well. And yeah, you can send some, some bucks my way if you are so inclined. That's going to be it for me. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Take care and long live promoter. Bye-bye.